Hey guys, we're back with another video and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to set up a minimap in Godot. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So as you can see here, I already have a test scene which I'm going to be using for this demo. And like I said, it, to set up a minimap in Godot is a very straightforward process, it's really simple. So as you can see here, in my test scene, I have a GUI which is just a canvas layer which I renamed. And I'm gonna actually, to add my minimap, I'm gonna select this node, and I'm gonna do Control A, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a viewport container as a child of it. So with the viewport container selected, I'm gonna go over to the inspector, go over to Rect, and specify a min size of the X to 200, if I can type, and then 200 for the Y as well. Now you could change the size if you want, it doesn't really matter, uh, make it whatever size you want. Then I'm gonna go over to Layout, and then I'm gonna do Top Right. Now it's aligned to the right, and I'm actually gonna move it a little bit like here, and that looks fine to me. You can move it wherever you want though, it doesn't really matter. Then with the viewport container still selected, I'm going to do Control A to add another node. And in this case, it's going to be a viewport. And same thing, for the size, we want it to have an X of 200 and a Y of 200. Like I said, you can have it be whatever size you want though. Then I want to actually set the transparent BG, which sets the background to transparent when turned on. And that's basically all we want to do here. And then with the viewport selected, I can go ahead and actually add a camera, which is what's going to be rendering onto this viewport. So go ahead and add a camera as a child of the viewport. And you can make it uh, equal current here if you want. And let's actually preview the camera. So if I preview it, this is our current view. So let's turn that off, move it up a little bit and do preview once more. And then do control two to actually have two viewports and like I said it's currently viewing this direction so I'm going to rotate it along the X by 90 degrees so that it's facing down so this is our current view of our camera so I'm actually going to go ahead and move it up like so uh, you can move it uh, however high you want um, and right now it's set to perspective I'm actually going to go ahead and change it to orthogonal uh, now you could keep it on perspective and mess around with the FOV and near to get it to, you know, display how you want it. I'm just going to choose this option here because it basically uh, renders everything flat. So it has the exact same perspective and like I said, everything looks flat. Uh, so I'm just going to use this. Now, as you can see here, it's really zoomed in. So in order to change this, I want to change the size here. So I'm going to change it to something like 30 which should work good in this case I think and yeah this would be our camera view and I've actually previewed this now and actually if I go to 2D view and you know exit out I should actually have been already able to see uh, my viewport for some reason it's not showing which is a little bit weird but if I go ahead and actually preview the scene as you can see, it's actually showing up. And you can already see that it is working. Now, it's not actually following the player. And that's because we need to add some custom script to do that. So let's go back here. And then, with our camera selected, I wanna go ahead and actually add a script. So go ahead and add a script. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it mini map in this case. And then I'm going to go ahead and just save it, in this case, in my GUI folder. You can save it wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. Go ahead and create it. And what we want to do in this script is we want to start off by getting a reference to the player. To do this, there's many different ways of doing it. In this case, I'm going to be using an export variable. So export. And in this case, the type of export variable we're going to be using is going to be a node uh, path. So parentheses, node path, then var and then the name of this variable. So I'm just gonna call it target, like so. And then I'm not gonna actually assign anything to it. I'm just gonna keep it like this. Then to get the actual reference to the player, we're gonna do on ready var. Otherwise it might cause some errors to show up if we don't do on ready. So on ready var player is equal to the get 
node method which we're passing the target to. So this will get a reference to our player. Then to actually have the camera follow the player around, we want to set the camera's translation. To do this, we're going to add a func process like so. And then we want to set the camera's translation. So translation is equal to a vector three and then the x value so it's the player dot translation dot x then the y value in this case i'm just going to be using the same uh, value as the camera size here um, uh, since we're using orthogonal view it doesn't really matter what we use if we were doing perspective then it would actually matter um, uh, because you know that actually affects the perspective but in this case since we're using Orvergano it doesn't really matter so I'm just going to use the same value as the size so in this case 30 uh, you could set up a variable if you want for that uh, in, but in this case I'm just you know manually typing it in then uh, we actually want to get the player z uh, translation so player dot translation and then dot z so if I actually run this now, and actually before I run it, uh, it will actually cause an error if I run it right now, because we forgot to actually set the export variable to our player. So make sure you select the camera, and in the inspector here, we want to go ahead and set it, uh, the target variable here, to the player. So click on assign, and then select the thing you want to you know the camera to follow so in this case the player so now we assign the target to our player now if we actually test it out it should actually work so as you can see here we're in our game and the camera is actually following the player around now if we actually go to the map border you can see that it's you know transparent and if we actually want a background for it uh, we want to go ahead and actually add a color act so to do this select our GUI, go ahead and add a color rect, like so. Then give it the size you want. So this needs to be the same size, or you can make it a little bit bigger, I guess, uh, as the uh, viewport container. So I'm going to make it the same size. So min size of X for 200 and Y 200. Then the color we want it. So I'm just going to use a dark color, like maybe like a dark gray or something like this. And then I'm going to do layout top right and then move it into place how I want it so that looks good to me then I want to actually move the viewport container as a child of the color rect then with the viewport container I'm gonna go over to layout and then just do full rect now if I test this out and I go to the world edge you will see that we have a black or dark gray background so that's pretty much all you need to do to actually set up a working minimap in Godot. So yeah, it's literally that simple. So with this, uh, I hope you guys found the video useful and helpful. And if you liked it, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, guys, have a wonderful day.